you know there's over 20 different keys on the saxophone? And no one knows for certain what they all do, but here at the Saxophone Academy, we're here to learn more. I mean, what does that do? Hi, and welcome to the Saxophone Academy. I'm Dr. Wally Wallace, and if you're interested in saxophone master classes and product reviews, please do subscribe and be sure to hit the like button to work on your side C fingering. Now today we're talking about side keys, the how, where, and why to use them. Now some of my adult students have gotten into the habit of using certain key fingerings and are a little resistant to new ones. We're gonna work on that today. Open your mind and expand your thinking to use side keys to play faster and smoother and cleaner. I mean, you paid for the dang things. Why don't you say we use them? So in today's master class, we're gonna talk about a couple of different side key fingerings and use them in context. And we're gonna do it in a playing workshop doing some minor two five phrases, which are a lot of fun. And we're gonna throw in the side key fingerings to show you how to use them. It's gonna be good and I have it for alto and tenor at the end of the video so you can play along whenever you're ready. So first things first, why do we use side keys and how do you know when to use a side key? Well, it all boils down to efficiency. There are some general rules and guidelines that teachers like to throw out, but all those can be broken at any time and there's different contexts where they may or may not work. There's plenty of exceptions. But the bottom rule, the one that is constant, is efficiency. We want to have as efficient key motion as possible. So we want to add or remove as few fingers as possible and also make sure we're not having opposing motion on different hands at the same time that we'll see in just a minute in the upcoming exercise. It's all about efficiency. Efficient is smooth and smooth is fast. So the first rule of efficiency on the saxophone is to avoid sliding off the biz B flat key. Now the biz B flat is that little guy beneath your B key that when you press them together plays B flat that most of you probably already know. It's actually named after a small man in New Zealand of diminutive stature named Donald Bisbee Buzzington. Now, the biz key, while a very useful key, is not the best when we go from B flat or A sharp, they are inharmonic, to B. That's somewhat of an inefficient motion we want to avoid. So, when we go from B flat to B, we want to use the side B flat fingering, where we simply finger A, and then the first right side key, or RSK1, right side key one, as we'll commonly see in method books. Now, I am guilty quite often of rolling off the Bisbee flat to B. My students are happy to point it out whenever I do it. But in general, if we have some time to plan in advance, meaning we're not sight reading and we're not improvising, we definitely want to use that finger. Now, in the classical world, they will most commonly, almost always, write that as an A sharp going to B. So when your eye sees the A sharp, you know to probably aim for the side key. There are tons of exceptions. Now in the jazz world, it is incredibly common to see B flat written to B because of jazz reasons. Let's take a listen to an example of that. So in this example, we're gonna use the side B flat fingering to avoid the rolling off the B flat to B. Again, in the classical world, you'll commonly see it written as A sharp. You don't have to think about it too much. In the jazz world, arrangers and people throwing up quick charts for you to read, it's gonna be written as B flat to B quite often. I see it all the time in the jazz world. So then we're gonna use the side key, and we're gonna practice that in the workshop at the end of the video. Now, the next incredibly common side key usage we're gonna see is from going from B to C, where we'll use RSK2. This is RSK1, RSK2. Two, also known as the side C key. The usage is fairly simple. You hold B and add that and voila, we get side C. Now this is to avoid the inefficient motion of the flip, the finger flip, the dreaded flip as we call it, going from B to C. We're adding a key and lifting off one, two different fingers at the same time. You do it all the time when you're playing your G scale for instance, but if you have to do it quickly, it might be better to use a side key. So let's take an example of what that might look like. Easy peasy, ham and cheesy. But let's take a look at an example where that's not ideal. In the next example, we see two B to C's. The first one is prime usage for that side C. The second one, 
We don't want to use it. Take a listen. Now the first side C, B to C, back to B, great usage. The next one, that second C, we see it goes to D. Now why don't we want to use the side C, uh, fingering there? Well, grab your horn and try it. Go from side C to D. It's incredibly inefficient, not impossible, but there's no good reason to do that. So in that case, we'd use one side key and back to normal. But if we're being honest, a lot of adults, myself included, would probably just use the normal fingering for both of those, but it can still be a great way to practice the side key fingering in the masterclass at the end of the video. Now, not to overwhelm you, let's add one more fun side key fingering into the mix, but it's not for speed or efficiency, it's for timbre, a French word meaning timbre, color, tone color, I suppose. So what we're gonna do is use a fingering just to change the color, the tone of a note. Listen to this example and you see if you can tell where I used it. Now that lick was chock full of side fingerings that you're gonna be practicing in the workshop. But at the very end, you'll notice I didn't play the D as the normal long tube fingering, I used a side fingering, LSK2. These are the left side keys, right side keys for, you know, I'm not gonna insult your intelligence. The left side keys we commonly call one, the D, two, the E flat, three, the one you know is the F. Now side D can be played as just that LSK2, that E flat key by itself, and we get a D, which gives it a different kind of throaty quality, not stuffy like the middle D, kind of gives it a West Coast cool sound. Take a listen one more time. Now, is that necessary? Absolutely not, and there's plenty of times where I'm not gonna do it, but you are adults, and you can make the decision for yourself when you're ready to start experimenting with that. There's no reason not to know it. I don't teach that to my younger students, I don't wanna confuse them, but as adult learners, you should be aware that this is something that pro players will do from time to time. All right, I'll quit talking. Let's get you playing. So we've got some two five phrases, call and response in the key of A minor. Don't stress about what scale I'm using here. Just kind of get used to the feel of the sound and use this as a way to start to practice these side key fingerings. Now I'm taking off the training wheels immediately. I want you to look at the C's and B's and figure out when and where you should use the side keys and where you shouldn't. I want you to start analyzing rather than me spoon feeding you the side fingerings. But if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Have fun and remember if you need to slow it down, you can always use the gear icon on the desktop or the three dots if you're on mobile and slow down the videos. Have some fun with them. Thank <laughs> you.
So, practice these and get used to adding the side keys. You paid for them. Let's use them. And have fun. Hit me up with questions down below or let me know any side keys you never ever use under any circumstances out of stubbornness. I want to get a little mini informal poll going. I will see you next week with a new video. I hope you have a fantastic week. But go practice.